Hi guys, hey everybody, welcome. This is um, a live stream here with ACM and uh, I'm Danny Maloney. I'm a drum tutor here at ACM in Guildford and today we are in the SSL um, studio which is brand spanking new so I'm happy to be in here uh, playing the Tama Star Classic house kit in here. Uh, I started on Tama's, funny enough. But I did bring my Brady snare drum here today, my, my Jarra ply, so uh, I wasn't leaving that home today. Uh, I wanted, wanted the experience here in the new brand spanking new studio. It looks so nice in the daylight too, lots of bright light. Um, so today um, for this live stream, um, I'd like to do a couple of uh, lessons with you. Um, first one would be hands and feet, developing your hands and feet. So often we like to play fills and we're just moving around the, key, moving around the kit and, and the bass drum or the, the hi-hat foot is, it could be ignored. So what I'd like you to start doing um, is to incorporate the bass drum and I've got some good exer exercises for that. So we're gonna take it at a nice slow tempo and then we'll bump it up, okay? And then the, um, the other lesson would be um, developing mobility around the drum set. So what that involves is we'll end up playing 16th notes, one enda, two enda, three enda, four enda, and we'll start adding accents. With those accents, we will move around the kit. So every, everything's on the snare drum, and then with one accent, we'll move it to the floor tom. Another accent, we'll move it to the high tom. And pretty soon, you'll be comfortable moving around within every 16th note of a bar, uh, placing it uh, wherever on the kit, okay? Um, so yeah, that's what we're going, going to cover during this live stream. And um, this material, this is what um, I'll, I'll be teaching degree, on the degree level. Even on the, uh, the diploma students get a taste of some of this in different formats. Um, so yeah, first of all, I'd like to start with a warm up uh, and anyone watching and been in my lecture before, they know probably what I'm going to warm up with. So I like to use a four on the floor pattern on the bass drum and the hi-hat foot will be two and four. Um, and on the snare drum, I like to play 16th notes. Now, if we get to a certain tempo in a warm up and the student is a little uncomfortable playing at that speed, then Dropping back to eighth notes is also fine. Yeah, so eighth notes, one and two and three and four and. Um, but we'll start with sixteenths. And we'll start with a comfortable tempo. Um, so we'll be playing singles. Uh, for today, we'll just, we'll look at four bars of single strokes, four bars of double strokes, and then four bars of power diddles. All sixteenth notes, bass drum, Four on the floor, that's on beat one, beat two, beat three, beat four. Hi-hat, foot, beat two, and beat four, okay? Um, I think that'll be it, and maybe we'll, we'll loop it around at least one more time. So we'll go through that twice, okay? So I'm, I'll count you in, and uh, yeah, let's see how it goes, all right? Here we go. One, two, three, four. All right, so that's uh, two times through. Uh, I need that myself. Oh yeah, feels like a Monday morning, but anyways. Um, so that's two times through. Uh, when you start getting comfortable with that, you could move it around the kit as well. Um, we bump the tempo. So we might go through the sequence three, four times um, for the more advanced student who's completely comfortable with this four on the floor pattern, we can start using a samba foot pattern. So check it out, I'll go one time through. Here we go. Uh, maybe slow it down just a little bit for you. So it's got one, 
doing and the thing we end up with. Alright, so that's another pattern you can use and again we could bump the tempo um, and uh, the, these, these foot patterns are really useful because um, if you're on a drum kit you should be using your feet as well, alright? So uh, having a pad or a snare drum and warming up on that is great but you're going to be playing drum set and grooves and incorporating all your limbs. So. Uh, these patterns, really useful, okay? And there's a couple of more. Um, once you get comfortable with that, we could start adding uh, more patterns within the feet as you play singles, doubles, and paradiddles on top. And the thing with the singles and doubles and paradiddles, um, you're always paying attention to the dynamics, okay? So soft, uh, medium, loud, let's say. We can limit it to three right now but soft, medium, loud, and uh, just, just seeing how the stick rebounds, you know, your left stick versus the right, uh, stick height, uh, what sound you're achieving from each stick, uh, is your heel down, is, is your heel up, um, maybe try one time through the sequence, your heel is down, and then the second time through, put your heel up, okay? Even bar to bar, if you do that, it feels a bit funky, um, because you never know, I know, most people have a preference. I play either way, but it depends on the gig that I'm playing. So if I'm playing a quiet gig, acoustic setup, um, often I'm not heel up, all right? So I, w I want to achieve just that feathering bass drum technique where the beater's just, just kissing the uh, bass drum. Yeah, just like that. Not really making out, but just, yeah, little, little, little kisses. So, uh, so the often the heel down. Uh, I know Dave Weckl, he, he gave a clinic last year um, in town and uh, he's like, heel up, that's it, that's it. And he's, he's got his hand and, and that's cool. So everyone's free to do what they're doing, but I'm just saying if, you, if you've got some versatility, uh, then explore it too. So challenge yourself. Um, okay, so I think it's time for the first lesson, um, hands and feet. So, let's see, we're going, to put, we're going to put this notation on the screen for you as well, uh, so you can have a look at it. And the idea is, if we're playing single strokes, right, left, right, left, right, left, um, we're just going to keep this going. So, in this notation, you will see it's between snare drum and bass drum. And all of these exercises, there's 20 of them, and um, they're notated in 16th notes, okay? So 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 4E and a... So example number one, we have snare, snare, bass, bass, snare, snare, bass, bass, snare, snare, bass, bass, snare, snare, bass, bass, okay? So the combination or the stick combination for this will be right, left, bass, bass, right, left, bass, bass, right, left, bass, bass, right, left, bass, bass. Okay, so we just keep this right, left, right, left pattern going. And if you can practice this way, then your muscles will uh, be in a memory situation. Uh, and when you just go to play a fill, your hands will be into place and you'll be ready to strike a downbeat with your right hand. So. I like leading, so my strong hand is my right hand. I like leading with my right hand. So this is one way to practice these exercises. Of course, you could just play them right, right, kick, kick, right, right, kick, kick, right, right, kick, kick, right, right, kick, kick, uh, or left, left, kick, kick. But for the idea of uh, achieving some muscle memory and um, working through some logical sequences, then I would suggest 
keeping the right, left, right, left. And when there's a bass drum, if a bass drum falls when the left should be, then the next note is going to be a right. Okay, so we keep that single pattern going. Okay, so at the end of this workshop, we're going to have a live Q&A. Uh, if you have any questions whatsoever regarding uh, this warm-up or the lessons to follow, please just uh, comment um, at the comment box below. Yeah, and uh, I'd be happy to go through these questions and, and see if I have the answers to them as well. All right. Uh, so, could I have the uh, click please? And uh, we're going to play this at 70 beats per minute, okay? All right, here we go. What? Oh, first of all, let me explain. What I like to do is play a bar of time and then play the exercise. Without complicating, I'll play the exercise first and then uh, we could start playing some time and the exercise. Time and then the exercise. So you'll see what I mean. If, if you just want to sit out for a bit, that's fine. But uh, you'll see what I mean. One, two, three, four. All right. So now if we add a drum beat and then play uh, the exercise, it's going to sound like this. So uh, when I say drum beat, uh, we're playing a bar of time and then the exercise. A bar of time and the exercise. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four. Okay, so that's how it goes. We can keep the click running because I'm going to demonstrate something now. So, this is just snare drum a kick, but what we want to get to after we go through uh, 20 of these exercises is we're going to go back through them and we're going to apply it uh, instead of just on snare drum, we'll move it around the kit. Um, and right now you're free to move it around anywhere. So let me demonstrate number one going around the kit. One, Two, three, four. Okay, so you can see where we can start going with this. Let's try um, number two. Okay, here we go. One, two, only on the snare, so. Okay, so you see these left hands in here on the R of one, R of two, R of three, R of four, okay? And the right hand is on beat one, beat two, beat three, beat four. So how about, let's just move that around the kit right now. So uh, here we go, one, two, three, four. So, number one snuck in. I think at least half of it, right? So the idea is then, imagine going through 20 of these, muscle memory, bang, you're gonna have all these variations in your hands, and then you might just end up playing one, two, three, four. Okay, 
who knows what will come out, but at least you're using the bass drum and you have something to fall back on, okay? You have, rather than getting your hands all muddled up, you have something to fall back on. So that's, that's what these exercises hopefully uh, will help with, is just, you know, something to fall back on, breaking up the hands between um, the toms, the snare drum and the bass drum, okay? So, let's cherry pick one. Uh, any favorite numbers out here? Seven is some favorite number. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. How about number 12, okay? One, two, Okay, so you get the idea there. So it's snare with the right hand, then bass, bass, then snare with the left hand. Bass, and then left, right, bass, right, bass, bass, left, bass, left, right, bass. Okay, so let's go back and we're going to bang through the first four. And this is pretty much how it would run in a lesson, uh, in a lecture here at ACM. Um, and we'd probably even go through if no one had lost their mind, we'd probably go up to, you know, 20, yeah, bang through, depending where everybody's sitting, um, as far as the comfort, comfort uh, you know, level of comfort, there we go. So I'm constantly judging, judging the group. Um, if we've got someone burning ahead, then I'll be, yeah, sure, play it, play it around the kit, maybe start adding double strokes. Um, so, but, Let's bang through the first four, and this is pretty much how we'll be sitting in the lesson, going through uh, at a comfortable pace, okay? So here we go, uh, exercise one, four times, exercise two, four times, three, and then four, okay? Here we go, 70 BPM. Oh, one, two, three, here we go, so. All right, so there you have it. Uh, that was each number, each exercise, four times, one, two, three, four, okay? And there are 16 more to get through. So if that feels a little quick, 70 BPM, absolutely drop it down, 60 BPM, whatever it takes, or if you just wanna get rid of the click and work through, uh, let's say number 15 would be
That what, if, if it takes that, then do it, all right? So drop out the click, that's, that's perfectly fine. Um, so yeah, we've applied it on the snare drum and kick drum, and you've seen it moved around the kit. So once you've been through them all, at 60 BPM or 70, uh, I think you'll start to want to move them around the kit if you haven't already. Okay, so feel free to do that. Play with the click, keep it in, in time, um, nice steady time. Even record yourself and listen back to see if that's locked in and, and see, how, see how the drums sound. Are you hitting them off center or center? Are you catching some ring, uh, rim or, um, okay. So just uh, use these exercises to help develop um, the hands and well, today it's the bass drum foot. So not feet, but hands, foot. Yes, so I hope that is uh, useful. Uh, I found it very useful for myself. I'll catch myself playing uh, a combination of probably, is it, is it, would it be possible to play six of these within one bar fill? Maybe, maybe I don't know, have to do the math on that, but yes. Uh, so uh, I hope you find it useful. And again, if you have any questions uh, about this or anything else, please comment below. Okay, so uh, moving on to the second uh, part of this lesson. I'd like to offer these exercises. Uh, I think it's a good way to help move around the kit. Um, so develop your mobility around the kit at the same time as developing your control, uh, your feet, uh, the independence, all right? So the idea is that most exercises that I work with there's there's so many things we're hitting at the same time, okay? So it's not just one exercise you're thinking about um, accenting on the end of one, okay? It's, it's how that accent is coming out, the sound of the drum. Uh, at the same time, we're not talking about only the snare drum. We've got our feet going, and which patterns are we playing, and what sound are we uh, producing? And again, are your heels up or down? And, and how, how high are your sticks, okay? So everything comes into play. Um, so for this one, I call it the moving accents. Um, and again, we're working, uh, what's, what's nice is, about this is that we're, we're working in 16th notes again. Uh, we're going to use the four on the floor bass drum again, and we're going to use hi-hat foot on two and four. I like four on the floor bass drum because it comes up in a lot of musical environments and uh, I just think it's, it's important for the drummers who haven't ever played that to be playing it, okay? So you might be sick and tired of playing it, but for those guys who are not aware that it is so important, um, please, please just, yeah, four on the floor in your exercises. Once you got it, then move on to some different patterns, okay? So, Moving accents. Right, uh, again, let's just work with single strokes. Single strokes being right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, okay? So what I'm going to do, and you can see this notation on the screen as well, we have four exercises. I want to play an accent only on the downbeat. So I'm going to play an accent on beat one, beat two, beat three, and beat four. Um, yeah, so let me just demonstrate that right now. I don't need any click for this, so we're just gonna bounce right into it. Again, bass drum four on the floor, hi-hat foot two and four. The notation is on the screen if you're curious. Here we go, single strokes, accenting beat one, two, three, and four. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Okay, so those, those notes that are louder and stronger than all the other notes, those are the accented notes, okay? So what I want to do now is move the right hand accent to the floor tom. Okay, so here we go. One, two, three, four. Okay, and if you listened close enough, or if you saw, one of my notes didn't pop out, and uh, the sticks are a bit sticky today, 
But what I like is that when you're playing notes at a low volume, you can play as low as you can go. And then if a stick doesn't, if a sound doesn't pop out, that's, I'm okay with that. Because we're focused on a feel. And if you can have the dynamics of an accented note and the light notes, they're almost, this, almost ghost notes, okay? So you're playing almost like ghost notes. Uh, and then one doesn't pop out, then that's t also telling me you're going, you, you're riding that edge, okay? So you're so close to having uh, the ghost note that it just disappears. One disappears. So uh, I had one disappear there. So, but I'm, I'm all right with that. Okay. Uh, now, that was the accent on one, two, three, four. What about the accent uh, on the next note, on the next sixteenth, which is the E? The E of one, the E of two, the E of three, the E of four. Okay, so that's a left hand. Okay, check it out. One, two, three, four. Okay, so all left hand accents. Now, um, let's move that to the high tom. Okay, so left hand accent to the high tom. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Okay, so see what's happening there? Uh, the left hand accent, all the E's up on the high tom. Um, we move along. The next 16th is the and of each beat. Check it out. That's going to be your right hand. And we're going to go back to the floor tom. All right, here we go. One, two, three. Okay, and then again, the, all the ahs, left hands only, and they will be on the high tom. All right, here we go. One, two. Right, so what we can do is start combining uh, more than one accent or different accents on different beats. So we've got two pages of material there. You can see that the accents, uh, each exercise, uh, we've got diff different placement for the accents. So the idea would be again, go through, play everything on the snare drum as notated with the accents really try to um, have the, uh, the bass drum pattern going along, the hi-hat foot definitely going along two and four. And then when comfortable, you could start moving them around the kit. Okay, so let's, let's take one accent. Let's, oh, sorry, let's take one exercise for example. Um, actually, let's just go with number You can edit this, right? <laughs> let's go with number, oh, let's do number one. There we go. So, right away I could see an accent on beat one. That's a friendly, that's friendly, all right, that's nice. And then the end of two. So, right away, I know it's a right and a right. Because I know all the downbeats are right hands, all the ands are right hands. So we're saving the left hand for all the e's and ahs. Uh, again, if you're not familiar with counting, uh, I would highly suggest counting out loud or in your head uh, and developing because uh, it really helps when you're reading notation. Uh, it might not be for every single person playing the drums, but give it a try, uh, work on it, and I guarantee you'll be able to tell yourself uh, when you're right, when you're wrong, uh, and it'll help you read. For example, I'll just count it. I can count it right now, and I'm sure you're going to hear how it sounds, okay? So it's going to be 
1e and a 2e and a 3e and a 4e and a 1e and a 2e and a 3e and a 4e and a 1e and a 2e and a 3e and a 4e and a Okay, so if we're moving that around the kit, here we go. We've only got rights, so we're only going to worry about the floor tom. One, two, three, four. Okay, uh, let's do one more. Let's see if we can get a left hand in here. Uh, they start out with mainly rights. Let's see, um, number five. Number five, we've got a left hand. So I see the accent on beat one. I know that's right. And then I see an accent on the E of two. So I know that's left, okay? Um, so let's try that one right now. Number five, I will slow it down just a little bit if you want to um, jump in right now as well. So, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E. Snare only. Okay, so there you go. You see what's happening? Um, again, there are a lot of exercises here. You, you practice them slowly, controlled, uh, accenting. You can exaggerate those accents, so really pop out the accent and lower all the other notes. We don't, we don't have to call them ghost notes, but maybe if you think about ghost notes, then that's a nice challenge and uh, it'll help you develop your dynamic control as well, which is really important, okay? So again, if you have any questions regarding this exercise, the warm-up, or the hands and uh, feet exercise, please just comment below, uh, and I'd be happy to answer all of those questions at the end of this live stream, okay? Okay, so here we go. Just to recap, um, we started with that warm-up, singles, doubles, and paradiddles. Remember, bass drum, four on the floor, and hi-hat, foot, two and four, okay? Remember, dynamic control, tempo. Uh, you're not just playing strokes, okay? You're thinking about everything else. You're being aware of everything else. And, and if it helps, put on some music, put on one of your favorite songs, and uh, use these exercises, uh, warm-up exercises to play along with your favorite songs. If, if you find, if you think about a, a warm-up being tedious, then that might be one good way to uh, just feel good, as long as you don't get carried away and start playing the song, okay? Or your favorite fill. Stick, uh, stick to the exercises and uh, you will be rewarded. Okay, so that was the warm-up. Then the first lesson we checked out the hands feet, or the hands today foot, yes? So again, Tempo is really important. If you wanna just turn off that click, go ahead and get the combinations. Get them correct. Don't, uh, don't throw in a left when it should be a right. Okay, so discipline. That's another thing. If you have no discipline, then uh, in five years time, you will look like a drummer and sound like a drummer without discipline, okay? So develop the discipline. Uh, know when you're playing it correct, or know when you're playing it wrong, right? I guess if you know when you're playing it right, you'll know when you're playing it wrong, hopefully. Uh, so the hands and feet, really useful for developing uh, fills around the kit, all right? 
And then the next lesson we looked at was the moving accents. All right, so moving the accents, I mean, even just developing this on the snare drum uh, and playing these exercises only on snare drum with the accents, again, uh, keeping the feet going uh, will be beneficial. Taking it a step further, you move it around the kit. Uh, and again, discipline, left hand where the left hand should be, right hand where the right hand accent is. Uh, left hand doesn't have to be on high tom, of course. You can start moving it. You can go to the crash, the hi-hat, uh, wherever is physically possible, if it makes sense, I guess. You know, if, if you can make it work without uh, falling apart, go for it, all right? Okay, so that's it for the recap. Um, if you have any questions, please comment below. Uh, and also, uh, if you want to check out some more, need some more information, acm.ac.uk online. We have so many open days coming up. So just come on down um, and uh, we, we'd love to see you here. All right. So now it's time to pop over to the live stream. Hi, and welcome to the uh, live q and I'm Danny Maloney. I'm drum tutor here at ACM. I teach at both uh, the Guildford and the Clapham campus. So I hope you've enjoyed the workshop today. Um, the accenting, uh, uh, moving the accents around the drum kit and the um, uh, developing hands and bass drum fills. All right. So if you have any questions, and I see a few have come in already. If you have any questions, please post and I'll get to them. All right. So here at ACM, I teach degree and diploma, and I teach the modules like technical studies or improv. So in technical studies, you'd be looking at rudiments, independence within many styles. So that's jazz, rock, and funk, uh, and Latin as well. Odd time playing, and uh, much more. So we often go into great, great detail with these exercises. And I can see one question asked by Toby, I believe it was Toby Tinker earlier. Uh, do the drummers sit at the electronic drum sets? Yes, so everybody's in a group, electronic drum sets, and I usually get drummers coming up to perform these exercises. So it's really good to get comfortable in front of a group, playing in front of a group, especially drummers playing for drummers. It's, it's really, uh, we know what you're doing, right? So there's even more pressure. So it's, it's, that's a great environment for um, developing these exercises. Um, I teach one-to-one -one tutorials several hours per week. So they can consist of maybe even a guitarist coming and looking for uh, just to learn some basic drum beats that they can help in songwriting or to work with other drummers. Um, maybe there's a drummer they're looking f uh, to learn a new song, a new groove, or help with some, some of the material within the modules. Um, so the tutorials one-to-one -one are, are tailored and uh, are a real, real good benefit to the student um, because we can get really in uh, whatever, whatever you're looking for. Uh, we can get it, bang, bang it out, and if you need another one, you come back a week later or two weeks after some work and uh, yeah, so one-to-one -one tutorials are really useful. Um, improv, uh, I've been teaching the uh, improv classes as well. So uh, within different styles, that could be Latin or rock or even jazz. Jazz is very much based on improv. So uh, there's a lot of exercises we go through to develop uh, improv skills and soloing. So whether those are open solos or solos fixed within four bars or eight bars or 16 or 32 bars perhaps. Um, or just even filling ideas also. Um, so that's it. That's what I'm doing here at ACM. Mainly I see all the drummers and uh, every now and then a guitarist or a bass player pops in and they enjoy working and, and hearing some ideas from, uh, from myself, from a drummer's perse uh, perspective. Um, so yeah, that's it. And um, so getting to some of these questions here, um, 
Okay, Oliver has asked, great class, Danny. If I wanted to get started on drums, are there certain things that I can do without having to own a kit to begin with? Uh, yes, definitely, definitely, Oliver. Um, let's see, without a kit, well, you should have sticks at least. Um, and a practice pad would be useful. So I know when I started, I was playing on a table. Uh, it wasn't, wasn't the fancy dining room table, but it was a table. So that worked really well. And uh, the bounce, I think, was quite similar. Uh, it may be a bit louder, but a practice pad would be really good. And you can get practice pads that are softer sounding or, or brighter sounding. Uh, the soft ones will be quiet, um, so that's good to have. And uh, so, yeah, without a drum kit, I would say even a drum teacher. So even though you don't have a drum kit, you could still have a teacher. And uh, a good teacher will point you in uh, the right direction. And um, you'd begin with the rudiments, uh, several rudiments. Uh, but as soon as you can start incorporating your feet, that would be good. So yeah, you could start without the drums, but I think if you're still interested after a few months, uh, then maybe you'd be, you'd be looking at picking up a drum set, yeah? Um, okay, who have we got here now? M Mitchell, all right? Mitchell Barlow. So, out of, curi out of curiosity, is there going to be any downloads for the sheet music on the screen? Okay, yes. So, uh, if you visit uh, the home page, you'll see PDFs uh, attached there. So, uh, yeah, they're up for your enjoyment. There's a lot of exercises there and everything I, uh, I presented in the workshop today. Uh, so the website link is www.acm.ac.uk slash livestream, okay? Uh, and they'll be right there. Also, this video will be posted online so you can refer to it again. Um, go back again and again, and the PDFs will be there as well. So, uh, what else? We've got uh, Louis Johnson. Okay, so Louis would love to know what Danny thinks about a career in drumming, and what are the pros and cons? How does it compare to just drumming as a hobby? Okay, and is there extra expectation on playing, etc.? Okay, so. A career in drumming, well, I think most people, most musicians would say it's a lifestyle. It's a, a lifestyle decision. Um, that doesn't mean you, you need to be, um, you don't have to live like a student the rest of your life or, or live, uh, you know, you, you, can, you can make some money playing music. Um, so don't, don't always put yourself out uh, maybe just for the art of it, the art of drumming. Um, because the way I see it, if I'm drumming, um, it often doesn't matter wh where I am doing it because I love drumming. So I think the approach you have to take if you want to be uh, happy and successful and have a decent income is to uh, just be involved with everything drum-wise. Now, comparing it to the hobby, I mean, if you just play drums on the weekend as a hobby, that's great too. So th I think the bottom line is that you, you got to be happy with what you're doing. So if you're going nine to five into the office and you're not happy doing that, well, you know, don't do that. And if you're drumming and you're not happy with the drumming, then don't do it. But if you can find a balance of maybe if you're just a hobby drummer, a weekend warrior, uh, then that maybe fulfills you. So finding that balance. Um, I hope that answers your question, questions there, Louis. Um, okay, so moving on. So we've got Toby. Right, so is this the kind of lesson where everyone would be playing along on the electronic kits? Yes, Toby, uh, that's correct. So we've got, uh, I want to say, 16 to 18 uh, Roland V-drums. And um, that's correct. Everyone would be sitting at the drum sets. And I often, 
almost always, once people are comfortable, and I can see that, I will get the drummers up to perform it in front of the group. And that really helps the drummer become comfortable performing, getting up on stage, uh, which is the acoustic kit, of course, and then to also hear how it sounds on the acoustic kit with the cymbals and the drums. And a lot of times it does feel different if you're just pounding on the pads on an uh, on electronic kit for 30 minutes or an hour or, or more at home and then you finally end up on an acoustic kit. The dynamics come into play and the touch is a little different. So yes, uh, on electronic kits, but I get everybody up as often as possible so uh, you can get comfortable with the kit, with the exercises and playing in front of uh, people. Okay? Um, all right, and this is uh, Louis Johnson. Uh, does Danny have any tips on developing speed and control with left hand, weak hand? Um, speed, speed, okay, developing speed and control with left hand. Definitely, I think, developing control, left hand or weaker hand, yes. Um, I, would, I would suggest starting exercises with your left hand. So everything I, I showed you today, I started with my right hand. You could reverse it all, even, even on the same drum kit, and just start everything with the left hand. And I think leading that way with the left hand and playing accents with the left hand, um, I think that helps develop the control. Speed, I think if your right hand, if your strong hand is fast or quick and your weak hand is not as quick, then um, I think if you're leading with the left hand or doubling up on your exercises, so if you're playing uh, two bars of exercises to every one bar with your right hand, so two bars with your left hand, weaker hand, one bar with your right hand, then maybe you're getting a, a bit more of a workout for your weaker hand. That's another way to look at it. Um, so, but yeah, definitely I would say start exercises with your left hand, especially all rudiments. And if you've got the time, spin around your kit, put your left, put your hi-hat over on uh, this side, cross over, or just play open-handed. Uh, so challenge yourself. Uh, I was on one gig where uh, I wasn't too happy with the bass player. I was happy with the gig, but the bass player, eh, I couldn't change the feel of the swing gig. So I ended up leading with my left hand. So I had my ride cymbal, and I just kept playing jazz ride patterns with my left hand. And I think that helped a bit. So I was making the most of that situation. Um, that's all I could say. I hope that helps, Toby. All right. Um, so that would be Louis for Louis. Sorry about that. This is Toby's question. What kind of sticks are you using? Ah, all right. So always Vic Firth sticks. Um, I had five A's that day. It depends what music I'm playing. Five A. I might pop down to a seven A, uh, and then I'll move or to a heavier stick five B. That's pretty much it. So five A. Down the road, bang. Uh, 5B if I want to start maxing out some more power um, and sometimes I'll pop down to a 7A, a bit lighter, but 5A what I'm using there in the video. Um, okay, and Mitchell, Mitchell Barlow. Hiya, I have an issue with drag rolls with my right hand and I have an issue where I can't properly drag this stick for drum rolls. Any possible advice? So the the drag, I can see that as an issue for, for drummers. Um, yeah, at, at a certain point, you just have to start developing a bounce. So for that drag, you're looking at a double bounce, basically. You're looking at, oh, right hand, I have an issue where I can't. Okay, so, so I believe what you're saying is that when you play a, a left drag, you're dragging the right stick. Um, it's not coming out or vice versa. Um, and then on a right drag, you'd be dragging your left stick. So I would say look at the amount of pressure, pressure you're applying, the slightest change in pressure, uh, 
will, will either force, force the stick into the head and it doesn't bounce, or you loosen up a little bit and the stick uh, will bounce uh, five, six, seven, eight times, okay? So find, do that, do that, what I call a bounce test, and find how much pressure where the stick goes, bzz, dies, and how little pressure you apply to let the stick go, blah, 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 okay? And you just need to experiment with that, and um, um, yeah, equal. You want to equal them out. And I would say stick to your strong side and feel how that feels and do four of them or eight of them and then go to the left side. Uh, going back and forth often when you're just starting out with these drags are not, it's not as beneficial as just concentrating on the continuous movement of one side and developing that and then move to the other side, okay? So I hope that helps. Um, okay, Ellie, here we go. How useful is the foundation year to students? So foundation year is definitely suggested for drummers who um, maybe haven't done grades, possibly haven't had a private teacher, and possibly have only played a few years. So we don't want you jumping right in and being over your head uh, on a two-year program. So the foundation year really sets you up, brings you up to speed, uh, gets you comfortable in the environment and the process of exercises and the modules and the learning. Um, so it would depend, I think, I think uh, one of the drum tutors here would be able to uh, Make, make a suggestion as to uh, if you need the foundation year or not, okay? So I hope that answers your question. Uh, what else? We've got Pierre Luigi. Okay. What if they make you go up and play and you can't play it? Ah! Pierre Luigi. Um, yes, I will be seeing that and I, and I won't I won't be, I will not make anybody go up. Um, but if I can see you play it, often I will suggest, yeah, get up, just get up. And if not, that's fine. But if, if you cannot play it, you will not be getting up on, uh, on stage to, uh, to play it. No worries there. Okay, so um, what else do we have? Do we have some more questions here? Aha. So, I referred to this earlier. Um, should I have a <coughs> private teacher? Um, yes, yes. If you haven't yet attended ACM and you don't have a private teacher and you're looking to uh, learn drums and, and develop further and maybe drumming as a career, then I would suggest a good private teacher, of course. Uh, with a private teacher, they will give you material either once a week or once every two weeks. Uh, and it could be even once a month, depending on your ability at the moment. So they'll pick out some of your weaker points and give you something to focus on. And if you're looking to come to ACM, then they, they should know what material you would need to, um, to be able to play to be comfortable coming to ACM and then to strive at ACM as well. So a good solid, a good solid foundation um, would be achieved from having a good teacher. Okay. Um, okay. And let's see. We've got another question coming in here. Mitchell Mitchell Barlow. Uh, are there style studied lessons? Say like study in funk for a few weeks, jazz. That's a good question, Mitchell. So I wouldn't say a few weeks. You could think of it, yeah, sometimes it is a few weeks, yes. <laughs> uh, but it's more, more like uh, chapters. And we can bang out one style in one week, actually. And then the next style. Uh, so yeah, you could think of it 
as as weekly, but also there's there's a lot of crossover. So when you're playing improv or you're doing the improv uh, module, you could be doing jazz, and then when you're working on some funk uh, in the technical module, um, that could be the same week, and then. In the technical, you could be doing some jazz. So um, it, it very much crosses over. Um, but yeah, so you would have multiple, multiple weeks. Overall, you would have multiple weeks of working on funk. You definitely multiple weeks of rock and jazz and Latin. So uh, not always consecutive, though, in the same module. I hope that's clear enough. I think it's clear enough for me now, too. Sorry about that. Um, Okay, so I think that's it for the questions. Um, all right, so I, I hope you've enjoyed the, the workshop material. It's, it's, I find it really useful, either with the one-on-one -on -one, uh, tutorials I give or within the, the modules and the group environments. Um, and if you want to know more, come on down to one of our open days. Book online, acm.ac.uk. Uh, and I'll see you there. I'll probably there be there to uh, see you, yeah? And we can talk about uh, everything drum-related. Um, so, clearing. We are still in clearing, so if you want to level up, call our admissions team and they will guide you through the process. Please call our admissions team on 01483, that's Guilford, 01483 500 841, okay? So, I hope you've enjoyed it today. Um, Next live stream workshop, please stay tuned. All right, and thanks for watching. Bye.